Hi and welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens and in this episode we're going to be doing an unboxing of Core Space, the sci-fi miniatures game. It's by Battle Systems. Uh, it's one I'm very excited to get out. Um, just being a miniatures game, completely solo playable, cooperative playable, uh, semi-cooperative playable, uh, whatever. It's I'm very excited to get this one. So um, let's just go ahead and get it open. Um, Battle Systems um, originally started creating uh, 3D uh, terrain, uh, but that not uh, your plastic terrain, but more of a 2D to 3D cardstock uh, terrain, and they have perfected that. This is their first board game to use that. So this comes with terrain and um, miniatures and lots of little cool features. So. Uh, let's crack it open. It's huge. It's a big box. Let's see how close we are to the camera there. A little bit about, uh, so this is basically what you're going to get. We're going to show you the details, but it all plays on a two by two area, which is really awesome for uh, miniature gaming because a lot of those you have to set up big three by three, four by eight, four by four. Um, huge, huge uh, table commitment. And this, uh, most of the missions take place on a two by two area. And for double ones, they're only, it's a two by four area. So uh, that is pretty darn cool. So there's a whole bunch of, this Kickstarter back in 2017. This is a retail copy, by the way. This is not a Kickstarter edition. So this is what you could buy from their website online, which is linked in the video. Um, so back, it, it, it uh, funded in late 2017, started shipping earlier this year. Um, and there are retail sets. This includes, it's gonna include two, what they call crew uh, teams, two crews, uh, four miniatures each, um, but you can buy additional crews um, from their website and they come in a box like this. And we're gonna do a different unboxing of the Cygnus crew uh, later. You can also get, and we'll go through this too, a full hardback rule book that has a lot more advanced rules, uh, character creation, things like that, um, scenario generation. Uh, but in this box, it's not a starter. It is a, well, let's put it this way. It is a starter, but it's a complete starter. It's not a fake starter where you have to buy a bunch of other stuff too. Uh, this includes everything you need for two players to play a full game. So we're gonna get this big box lid off. And the first thing you see, is we've got the gaming mat. Now this comes with a full two by two neoprene interior game board in a mat that is designed to fold up and go back in the box. So here we go. Um, just get a quick view of the surface here. Very, it's, it's what's nice is it's thin, but heavy enough to lay flat, but thin enough that it'll fold right back up and go in the box. So that is pretty cool. And so your terrain will just sit on this and your characters move around and it's even slightly gridded. You can see, so if there's some tight areas where you can't use the ruler, which all the terrain is only so high, so you can use the ruler above it. And it's, you know, it's honor system, you know, movement. You're not trying to be uber precise with um, measuring tapes and things like that. So to set that aside. Now, uh, this came from England to me in Georgia. So uh, in the United States, Georgia, not the country Georgia. So things got a little disheveled here in shipping. So we'll uh, take a look. Looks like everything else is well packed. There's just some loose items. So let me restructure some stuff here. All right, so these little baggies here are the clips that you'll use to put the terrain together. I made, there's a good a terrain assembly video online from Battle Systems already, but I may do one as well. There is, it's very interesting. One thing I've heard great about this is that they have really thought about how this goes back into the box instead of just giving it to you and saying, here, tough luck, figure it out yourself. So this, I believe, comes with it and it is you assemble it as a divider so this is going to go down the box like that 
and help you store your supplies. Actually, it's probably like this because there's two notches here, so this one should go around, and then the, I think the ruler is going to fit there, so we'll fix that. All right, a lot of stuff to go through here. This is your uh, threat tracker tray. There's going to be a piece of cardboard that goes in here, and you will mark the threat as it builds throughout the mission. And then these gray plastic items here are the character trays. You get eight of them. It's very well designed. I'll show you when we get all get, get down to the cardboard as well. But um, your character uh, card will go here. Their items will go here. Their uh, current class will go here. And then they use a peg system to track health and uh, skill points and uh, ammo. So when you start the mission, you have those there and you remove them as you get in here instead of having to put on tokens and just kind of juggle things around. So for each two players, for each of the two players, you get four of these trays and they're very sturdy plastic. They're not just 3D printed. They've also got these connectors on the back as expansions may come out. They can expand these trays by just clipping something to it. So that's pretty nice. You get eight of those. And these are the pegs I was talking about. You get threats, uh, health, ammo, and uh, skill points, I believe, if I've got that right. Another nice thing they've given you is rubber rings to go in the miniatures. So when you start playing, you're not going to want to immediately start painting your miniatures before you can play. Um, so you'll be able to, each, each crew in a two-player game can snap these on to their characters. And then, you know, I'm the blue, you're the green, and we know who's, who's who. Then they give you a drawstring bag with a core space logo on it. This is for drawing uh, equipment at random. You'll put the counters in there and you can draw them. We have dice. They're used for various aspects of the solo and AI. It's cool to know that in the game, this is not, the players will always play a crew. The AI controls the purge, who are the, the robotic bad guys that you see here. Okay, so, and then there may be some other civilians, uh, uh, police forces, things like that, that are moving around too. Those are all controlled by the system. So, normally you're not against the opponent, the other player, unless a situation arises where I want that and you've got it kind of thing. For the most part, you're both on this in this mission trying to achieve your goal and get out of there. So it's pretty cool. So uh, these are your combat dice. You always roll the blue. The reds are extras. The blue is more powerful, so these are just additive to it. They're pretty decent, pretty good size. They're about uh, probably 16 millimeter. Okay, and then you've got this, which does it's a multi, it's a decider die kind of thing. It does multi purposes. Each side has three different symbols. So those symbols will all uh, uh, do different things for the AI. And then this is your dice to tell how many uh, enemies spawn based on certain conditions. So based on the threat. So we're still not even down to the cardboard yet. We do have a deck of event cards. Uh, each round, I believe it is, you're gonna start with an event, which is gonna change based on the status of the threat tracker and do different things. Some good, some not so good. So look at the first one. So at the beginning of the game where you're relaxed or guarded, you're gonna just place one harvester at the nearest entry point to a trader. So that's gonna be bad. Um, in this case, the nearest purge to a trader suffers a systems failure and remove it from play because they're robotic. So that's cool. So you get a bunch of those. So then that's it for this little storage tray that's in here. And then, we have a box, and in this box we have all the miniatures, and a uh, so they've got a place to, for the miniatures to go. If all you buy is the, the base game, then you're going to have that, and some tokens and counters and cards can go in as well. So one thing they've done that's very nice is they've color coded everything, sort of like uh, Imperial Assault does, so you can play immediately without painting again. So you're uh, purge miniatures are all in a brown tan color. The um, 
crew miniatures are gray and then you can snap the bases on there for each side and then the civilian characters are blue so it helps it to uh, find them on the board so they're all one piece there's no assembly required to these guys and look pretty good pretty detailed you're going to get 20 uh, miniatures in this uh, starter set you can add again you can add more civilians you can add more purge uh, and then you can buy more crews. So I showed you in the beginning of the video the hardback rulebook. This is the rulebook that actually comes with the game. It's a soft pack. It's streamlined, so it's just for what you need to play this game, but still comes in at over 100 pages. Looks like 106 pages. I think that's perfect bound, and it is larger, larger print, and full color. Tells you how to set up, tells you how to play. You can download a sample rule book, which is just the, some key, key areas um, online if you want to look at it first. You can't download the whole rule book. This has got the missions as well, goes through the different phases. This is also a campaign game, so you can take your same crew through the uh, through several missions. They're linked and uh, uh, take their take their gear from mission to mission so that is also pretty awesome for those that like that you can also play one-off missions you can play create your own missions they have downloadable missions on Mondays uh, as well so and then I believe each of the expansion crew come with missions so a lot of a lot of growth a lot of replayability um, and here's all the cardboard it's at the very bottom and it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sheets of cardboard. Or punch board, I should say, plus a half. So one thing they've done is it's very bright and colorful. A lot of times you see sci-fi stuff, miniatures games, it's very dark and dreary. They've also coated all of this, especially the player boards and stuff. So that you can use dry erase markers on them and that is another really awesome touch so let's try to put some of this back before we get into the cardboard so that'll set over there i believe the miniatures make it there and our divider can go here and maybe the divider probably goes on the bottom but for right now i'm just getting stuff out of the way um so that's really cool you know it looks like that slots into, into there um so anyway, so it's not as it's not as uh, dark and dreary as a lot of stuff you see. So, all right. So what you've got is these are ship boards, and this is where you you track your ship activity between missions. And so these will, when you start a mission, this will dock onto the onto the game board and you'll move out from here. But then when you're done, you'll collect and mark your status there. So you may take damage to your ship, so on and so forth. So there's two of those, because you got two crew. Um, um, they do not, I guess the shipboards are identical. And then we have all the punch board. So looking closer, these are the character cards and they punch right out. So the other cool thing is that each, and they, <laughs> this is really nice. See on the border of all the, they tell you what it is that you're looking at. So these are spawn tokens. Uh, these are character boards. These are the purge board. These are counters. <laughs> uh, so it tells you, so here's your, let's tell you about, so here's the purge track. The, uh, excuse me, the, uh, I forgot what I called it now activity track and this will slide right into this tray and then you can mark the different states along the way um, and then like I was saying the characters will go into the character tray and they drop right in so you can just stack these and save them between games and what's cool is they put a hole so you can pop them right out without having to dump everything over. So like on other things where you might want to change something. But one thing that's also cool is the, this 
is not your crew. They can be an AI civilian. So you can actually take this card, not in a tray, because this is for characters, crew characters. But you can take this and use it in the game and have this miniature moving around, interacting as an AI. So that is also awesome. All right, rambling on. Just want to get to the meat here. So one set of tokens. These are more characters. These are the, um, so these are crew. These are also the classes that they have and gear. These are what's going to go in the draw bag. Plus you'll start with some gear. Um, very well, well made, very well coded too. I've seen other games that are coded for um, dry erase and they're not really well coded. They start smearing and stuff. This looks like it's like ready to go. I mean, so here's your movement ruler. So we'll pop that real quick and show you. And what you do is you'll set this up, over, you know, when you're when your character, and you just kind of eyeball it. You don't have to be exact. Lots and lots of gear, lots of weapons, lots of cool things you can find like ammo. You do spend ammo in the game. And now we've got room scatter, and these are obviously going to be, um, we've got lockers, we've got crates. Another nice attention to detail that they did is that the crates have this um, eggshell kind of look to them on the inside. So by the time you end up getting them all put together, this lid will look like it's actually, the, the inside of the crate is padded and so it looks like it's a real crate. Even though it's, you know, it's clearly uh, made out of cardstock. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Lots of scattered terrain here. There's a wanted poster, tables, counters, lockers. And, and the other cool thing is the crates are made to open and close. So when you put, you'll, you'll at the start of the game, you'll randomize gear in there and then you'll shut it. So one player can go up to it, look through it, find the stuff that they want that they have room for to carry, put the other stuff back in there and not tell you what it is. So you get two sheets of those, so you get double the amount of that. And then here's girders and walls. So let me pop one out real quick. So that's a, that's a, a window. <laughs> and then a wall. So what's gonna end up happening is those plastic clips we had, these are gonna stand up, right? And then you can close the door, open the door, close the door, and open the door kind of thing. Just by punching that back in there. Because it's sturdy enough to take it back in. So the door's shut. Now we can't do anything. And then you put it back and we can do something. So that's pretty neat. All right. I'm already sounding like a fanboy. Mainly because I am. This is looking awesome. I've watched a few gameplay videos of it. I usually don't know this much about something when I'm opening it. So anyway... Bunch of walls, more decorations, struts. The whole thing is designed to, to connect together, so you may build one vertical wall, another vertical wall, and they attach, so uh, they won't slide around as easily. So, you get these are the cyberpunk setting. You can order a cyberpunk terrain as well if you want to expand and do a larger game table. So you get three sheets of these. They all look they all look like they're the same. So you get three sheets of cyberpunk walls. You get two girders and walls uh, you get two of the room scatter which we already saw now these aren't quite as coated you don't mark on these 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 are sturdy they are coated but they're not dry erase coated it seems like whereas whereas these here almost have a plastic feel to them plastic coating on top of them which is pretty cool these are more of a matte finish and so you're gonna get another sheet with your ruler and your weapons and all the crew, and all the purge, and your alert tracker, another guy there, and two ship cards. So, a lot of stuff in this box. I'm not even going to try to put it back in. You've seen it all. Um, and one thing I'll touch on real quick here is the that rule book that you can get. It's nice they also ship it shrink wrapped, so it stays safe in transit. Uh, the whole package got to me through international shipping. 
I don't know, six to ten days. Um, so if you're thinking of ordering it, you know, give yourself a little more lead time than you would with an online store in general, but uh, they're pretty fast to get things shipped out. So the deluxe rule book is uh, hardback, full color, obviously. And it comes in at 177 pages. And it's got lace flat, got your quick reference order of play and everything in it. But it's got a lot more detail. It's got uh, character, character bios for all the different crews. Various things about civilians, how to create them. Here's missions. Just a whole bunch of good stuff in here. So that is an optional add-on. You can get that. You know, the, the rule book that comes with the game has enough to play the game. But then you can add on the deluxe rule book if you're interested in expanding the universe there. So anyway, that is everything you're going to get in Core Space, the sci-fi miniatures game from Battle Systems. I look forward to demoing it for you soon. Thank you again so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!